there is a that I mentioned is I mentioned his name to you before. There is a French philosopher, uh, unfortunately passed away a few years ago, Foucault, F O U C A U L T, Michel Foucault, who claimed that power was used by the few to transform their ideas about the world into the truth, into the world, and then all other ideas had to conform to it. So we need to keep in mind Foucault's lesson. What still is and forevermore will remain merely a truth claim about the world, produced by an individual or by a community of individuals, is used as a club forcing everybody else's ideas in society to conform to those set of ideas. Their ruling ideas become our, our ideas, not because they're true, but rather because they assert that their ideas are not theirs, <laughs> but rather they belong to the world. And the way they do that is through that rationalist empiricist trickery. So what we have to do as individuals is to, to uh, resist this kind of trickery, this epistemological trickery, and not allow their ideas to become our ideas, that is to control our behavior. That's what Marxism is, is uh, struggling against, or, or, or let me put it more accurately, that's what Marxist epistemology is struggling against. Non-Marxian discourses of the day, of Marx's day and today, claim that their particular theory of the world is in fact the truth. They've, they have discovered, whether it be neoclassical economic theory or Keynesian theory, they have discovered an absolute singular truth, which is no ex class exploitation exists. So Marxism, or Marxist epistemology, attacks that kind of epistemological claim of non-Marxian economic theory by showing that no, it's not an absolute singular truth, no class exploitation, rather that's a relative truth claim relative to neoclassical and economic theory, and it's merely another claim about the world, and Marxism is a theory that produces a different claim. And so we have a struggle in theory between these two different claims about the world. Neither one of them is absolutely true. They're truth claims. And they could be interrogated and questioned, rejected, accepted, hated, and loved, just like anything else in the world. So from a dialectical perspective, a truth about the world, whether it be within Marxism or physics or whatever else, is just another claim about the world. And like all other claims, it is socially produced. Hence, again, very important, it can be questioned, it can be rejected, it can be accepted, it can be loved, it can be hated, just like any other entity in the world. And if one rejects a particular uh, claim about the world, one is not rejecting the truth. And hence one is not uh, dangerous or an idiot or stupid or whatever, Girl, crazy. Rather, one is rejecting an individual or group's claim about the world. That's not a minor thing, but that is what one is doing, and one is not then transformed into a, a fool by rejecting someone else's claim about the world. What we have to be aware of is how rationalism and empiricism engages in this kind of illusion, this epistemological illusion or trick or act of magic, which, they, which is, again, they, they take their uh, ideas about the world and somehow transform it into a fact of the world. We also need to remember one other thing in terms of rationalism and empiricism. These are theories of, of knowledge, and one can always ask about each. How do you know that your particular theory is true? Now, in other words, you can ask the rationalist, rationalist, how do you know your particular rationalist epistemology, epistemology, which is a theory, is correct? If the rationalist answers that I know that my uh, theory is correct based upon reason, well, you can say to the rationalist, that's circular reasoning. You haven't shown anything. You haven't proven a thing. What you've done is invoke your theory, your rationalist theory, in order to prove it. In other words, you're saying, in answer to the question, that reason is a standard of truth on the basis of my reason. Well, you're justifying reason on, on, on the basis of reason. You're assuming 
That's not proving anything. That's just kind of circular reasoning. Same thing goes for empiricism. How do you know your empiricist uh, uh, methodology, your empiricist theory is correct? If the empiricist answers, I know it to be correct based upon my experience, what that empiricist is doing is then is invoking the theory in order to prove the theory. That's as circular as is the rationalist. And of course, it's quite possible that an answer to this question, how do you know that your particular theory is true and valid, that the rationalist or the empiricist might fall into the other theory. That is, the rationalist theory might fall into empiricism, the empiricist might fall into rationalism, and you have an endless oscillation throughout the tradition of philosophy between uh, uh, rationalism falling into empiricism and empiricism falling into to rationalism. And I don't know of any way out of that kind of circularity. Um, uh, but if you do, um, you'll become very famous um, in philosophy. Finally, an important question arises. If we reject this attempt to find absolute singular truths, truths, are we left with an inability to make choices at all? In other words, when confronted with different truth claims about the world, how do we make choices? Or put this differently, do we not fall into a kind of nihilism when we are confronted with all, the, all of these different uh, truth claims? And I think the answer is no. One is not and cannot be rendered passive um, uh, in, uh, in confronting um, all these different uh, uh, contending truth claims about the world. And the reason is because we as individuals are all overdetermined sites. And one of our active responses to that overdetermination of us as individuals is the choices we make amongst everything in life, which includes these theories with which we are confronted. We prefer some over others, in part because of all the different political, economic, cultural, and natural processes which overdetermine us. Those different determina determinations yield our choices in life, including our choices over these theories. So we're never passive. We're always active participants in choosing one over the other. What Marx wanted us to experience and to be aware of and to think of was how his particular theory would affect our choices. In other words, he wanted to confront us with his particular truth claim with the hope that its determination, its effect upon us, might persuade us to incorporate his ideas into our way of thinking and, in, and into our way of, of seeing the world. Namely, to begin to think and to begin to see class exploitation in the world. That concludes this presentation.